Okay, so in this video, we want to find a way of evaluating the average value of a function f of x on an interval from a to b. So let's remember what is the average value of n real numbers, right? So if you have, say, n real values, so y1, y2, up to yn, the average of those n values is simply the sum of all values. So y1 plus y2 plus all the way up to yn. So you add all the values and you divide by the total number of values over n. And that, of course, is the average value of y1, y2 up to yn. And we can write this more concisely if we use our sigma notation. So we can factor from this a 1 over n. And then we're left with y1 plus y2 plus all the way up to the last value yn. And that is, of course, 1 over n. And now here we have what? We have a sum, so this is sigma. We're summing the y values, and the index changes from 1, 2, up to n. So we need a dummy variable. We'll use i. So we're summing yi, and i begins at 1 and goes all the way up to n. So this is the average value. And what I'll do now is I'll bring in the 1 over n inside the summation. And you'll see um, what's the reason for this very, very shortly. Again, we are summing with respect to i. So with respect to i, 1 over n is a constant. And we can bring it in to the summation. So we'll have the summation as i goes from 1 to n. The y value, so yi, times 1 over n. Okay, so this is the formula we'll use for the average value of n real numbers. Now, how can we use this idea to then find the average value of a function over a given interval of x values? Well, let's try and visualize what we have. Just for argument's sake here, we'll assume that we have a positive function over the interval. So assume the graph of f of x looks something like this. And this is say point A, and this is point B. So we are asking, can we make sense of the notion of the average of this function over the interval x equals a to x equals b? Now we know how to make sense of the average of a finite number of values. If you give me n values, no matter how large n may be, this is how you can compute the average of those n values. But the problem is, over the interval from a to b, for any given x value, we have a corresponding y value, so a value of the function. And as there are clearly an infinite number of x values, there are an infinite number of y values. And so how can we possibly make sense of the average of this function when over the interval from a to b, there are clearly an infinite number of values? Well, the idea is let's first find an approximate average of the function and then as we take more and more values, we should get closer and closer to the true average value of this function over the interval. So what we'll do is we'll take n values for this function over the interval, so we'll separate the interval into n equal parts. So x0 will be a, and then we'll have x1, then x2, dot dot dot, up to b, which is our last value, so x and the right end point. And now for each xi going from 1 to n, we will take the corresponding value on the function. So we have here y1, here we have y2, y3 up to yn. And we separate the interval from a to b into n equal parts. So the width of each interval which we will call delta x as usual, is the total length of the interval 
that we are dividing into n equal parts. So this is the width of each interval. And now, as we have just discussed, instead of sampling the infinite number of y values of the function over the interval, we'll simply sample n of them. And this, of course, will not give us the true average value, but it will be an approximation. So this will be y1, which is the value of f at x1, so f of x1, plus y2, f at x2, plus dot dot dot, up to yn, the value of f at xn. And of course we divide the sum of all the n values by n. And of course we can rewrite this as we did before into this form, right? So this is the summation as i goes from 1 all the way up to n of f of xi times 1 over n. And now we have our approximate average as we are sampling only n values of the function. But as we let n go to infinity, we will be sampling more and more and more values on this function. So in the limit, we should arrive at the exact average of the function over the interval. So the exact average will be obtained as we let the number of sampled y values tend to infinity. And now the question is, well, how do we evaluate this given expression? And if you look at this for a second, it should look very familiar. We have the function f of x on the nth over from a to b, and we have to evaluate the limit as n goes to infinity of the sum as i goes from 1 to n of f of x i times. And what's wrong here is that we don't have delta x, but we have instead of 1 over n. But if this was delta x, this would be the limit of the Riemann sum corresponding to, corresponding to the integral of f of x from a to b. So the idea is, how can we have delta x appear in the expression? Well, the idea is be sneaky. Let's multiply the 1 over n by 1, and we choose our 1 to be, of course, b minus a over b minus a. And you say, well, now what? Well, the b minus a over n will give us a delta x, and the other b minus a, 1 over b minus a. This is a constant, so we can factor out of the summation. So we'll have 1 over b minus a times the sum, as i goes from 1 to n, of f of x i, times, and again, b minus a over n, but b minus a over n is delta x. And we can do one last step. We are letting n approach infinity with respect to n. 1 over b minus is a constant, so we can pull this out of the limit as well. And so we have 1 over b minus a times the limit as n goes to infinity, the summation i going from 1 to n, f of x i times delta x. And now we have our Riemann sum as usual, right? If you think of it, we take f of x i, this is the height. So if you take f of x1, this is the height of the first rectangle, times delta x the width, gives you the area of the first rectangle, plus when i is 2, f of x2, the height of the second rectangle, times delta x, the width of the rectangle, gives you the area of the second rectangle, plus f of x3 times delta x, all the way up to i equal n, where you get f of xn, times delta x, the width of the interval, which gives you the area of the last rectangle. And of course, the Riemann sum alone adding up the area of each rectangle, so the area of rectangle 1 plus the area of rectangle 2 up to the area of rectangle n, gives you the approximate 
region area, sorry, under the curve. But of course, as we let n tend to infinity, the error will shrink to zero, and we obtain the exact area below the curve from A to P. And this is exactly the definite integral at f of x from A to B. And so we're done. Very elegant formula. So to compute the average of a function over a given interval from A to B, it suffices to integrate the function over the interval and multiply by 1 over the length of the interval. And that's it. So we can now consider an example. So what if we asked, quite simply to find the average, value of, we'll go with y equals x cubed on the interval from negative 1 to 2. And we can visualize the graph of this function. x cubed has a very simple graph. This is y equals x cubed, and the interval is from negative 1 to 2. And now we can easily find the average. So the average value is, so 1 over b minus a, so 2 minus negative 1 is 2 plus 1, 3, so 1 third. And we integrate from negative 1 to 2 over the interval, the function x cubed. And now, of course, to evaluate this, we don't use the limit of the Riemann sum, but we instead use the fundamental theorem of calculus. So we have a third power rule, x to the 4 over 4, and we must evaluate our antiderivative from negative 1 to 2. Well, we can easily factor the 1 over 12. So we'll be left with x to the 4 at 2, because 2 to the 4 is 16, minus negative 1 to the 4 is positive 1, and so we're left with 15 over 12, common factor of 3, 5 over 4. And so the average value of x cubed on the interval from negative 1 to 2 is 5 quarters, and that's it.